Hello and welcome back to another episode on Unbox Tech Bytes. Today I'm going to be showing you how to change your stock splash screen on a Ford vehicle using Forescan and an OBD2 connector. So first off is we'll open up Forescan and we'll connect to the vehicle using the connection tab on the bottom left. If you've also got HS and MS CAN, then it'll ask you to switch that over during the process so it can carry on reading all the modules involved. Once that's finished, you will then be able to go to the modules and make the amendments required. Now we can ignore all the DTC fault codes and we will then not save the profile and we'll select the sixth option down on the left hand side which looks like a microchip which will list all of our modules. We'll then go to the APIM model configuration and we'll make sure that our OBD2 connector is set to HS CAN. This will check that you're using the SYNC3 version and then what we'll do is we will scroll down and towards the bottom under S on the left hand side you'll see the option for splash screen. Now mine's currently set to Bronco. So we'll just double tap on that and that'll open up our options. Now you can see here we've got 23 options to choose from. Some of them are all the similar Ford logo um, but play around to see which ones you like. I've just written it back to the old splash screen here and then we would ask you to cycle ignition off and on again and obviously if you want to change it back once you've done that you can then double click on it again and select whichever option you prefer i like the bronco one myself the navigator is also a pretty nice one but you'll have your own preference so once you've selected click right and then that will take us through and then all we need to do then once it's written it and we've uh, restarted the ignition is to then click OK. That box will disappear and then what we need to do is stop the service using the button below. Now we'll go up to our top icon on the left hand side for the car which is the main page and then we just need to go to the bottom and disconnect from the system. We can now then remove our OBD2 connector and that is all sorted. Now if you haven't already please do take a moment to like and subscribe to the videos it really does help provide more content to you guys um, but that's it for now please take a moment to check out some of my other videos and I'll catch you soon.